Hello, welcome back to the woods. And this video is all about being prepared. And this is also one of those that I can do from back home in the shed. Now, when I go out into the woods, I've always got several items on my person. Number one, my little EDC light pouch. And in there, I've got my, my pocket knife. I've also got a little flashlight and I've also got a ferro rod and that goes with me everywhere anyway so whether I'm in the woods in the town that is always with me if I am in the woods there's a couple of other items I carry just in case well I've got a little Bic lighter complete with some Gorilla tape and a length of bright cord easy to get a fire going with one of these tends to get used for melting the ends of cord lighting up stoves 101 little tasks in the woods very useful item to carry lastly something i carry <clears throat> is this and this is my little companion pouch and in here these are very secure i've got a tampon which can be used for first aid or fire lighting and some gorilla tape again first aid fire lighting fixing things holding things together stopping holes in things rips in things a multitude of different uses for both of those items so those are my basic items that i always carry with me in the woods now what i found is for 90 percent of the time those few items cover me for my basic fire lighting needs when i am out in the woods I tend to go for natural materials and in most environments I can find the stuff I need to get a fire going no trouble at all but there are always those occasions when for whatever reason whether it's the weather is atrocious or you need to get a fire going in a hurry because it's an emergency or you just need to get a fire going quickly when those items might not be enough and for that reason for many many years I've always carried this and this is my little fire pouch now I made this one way back in the late 80s and it's made from Kuldura it's got a well the velcro sort of had it now the velcro roll top lid it's nice and durable it keeps the water off it's not too bulky and it's worked very well for years but it is looking a little bit tired inside that well over the years I've carried all sorts of things but usually had two sometimes three of those in one lot with some lifeboat matches one with some cotton wool and Vaseline and then it had another one that had little gelatine pouches full of lighter fluid it was also a Zippo lighter in there and a little magnesium block with a striker down the side and this was what I carried for many many years many years actually you're talking 30 plus years and what I decided to do recently was to update the kit because in those 30 years well kits come a long way I tend to use different fire starting stuff uh, nowadays to some of the ones that I did back then and also I've had a lot of different experiences over the years which have shaped the type of fire lighting gear I carry and how I carry it. And that's what I want to share with you today. The new pouch and its contents. So this was the old pouch and this is its replacement. And what I'll do is I'll take you through the pouch and what I've got inside it. So, the pouch, as you can see, it's slightly different design, it's a very similar size. Number one, it's made of a much brighter coloured fabric. Now, back in the day when I made that, I was probably more interested in tactical. Nowadays, with 30 years under the bridge, I'm a little bit more interested in practical. And these bright colours are practical for what I want out of doors. I need to be able to see this if I leave it on the ground so that I don't lose it. I can also use it as a marker 
for where my shelter is. I can hang this up on a tree and even at a distance it can be seen. I put a strip of reflective tape along the top there as well so that if it's after dark I can just shine my torch through the woods and it will pick up either the colour or this bright reflective strip that runs along the top. I've also put it on a neck cord and that's again number one so I don't lose it. This actually tends to live in two places either in the top of my rucksack for just in case or in the winter it tends to be tucked inside my clothing because that's the time that I'm most likely to need the contents of this pouch. Also with this cord it allows me to do several things. I can put it down like so, I can open it up, I can fish around inside with both hands and I haven't got to worry about it falling onto the ground or the contents falling out. The way the cord is attached, it always stays up the right way. And also if the weather is really bad, well I can turn my back to the weather and I can lean forward to get to the contents of my pouch, thus protecting this area here and the contents of my pouch from the weather. I also changed the top very slightly. Instead of having a double rollover on the top, it just has a single fold with a strip of Velcro underneath. And then I added these two tabs. And the two tabs are there to make it easier to open if you've got cold, numb hands. In fact, the tabs also allow you to do it single-handedly because I can hold one tab with one hand. So let's say if I had an injury, I can then bite the other tab pull it open, I can get to the contents of the pouch, even with only one good hand. I've changed the fabric, instead of using the heavyweight Cordura, I've gone for a lighter weight, four ounce PU nylon, which is more than adequate for the job. It keeps the weather out, it's nice and supple and it weighs that little bit less. So that's the pouch. Not that different to its predecessor. Just as I said, this 30 odd years of experience has sort of shaped how I've put this one together and how this one works. What we're going to look at next is what I've got inside. So the contents of the pouch are divided up in a couple of ways. I've got some sources of ignition. I've got three sources of ignition in there. And I've also got some fuels, some tinders, stuff that if everything around me is soaked, I can always fall back on this stuff. So I'm always guaranteed getting that fire together. So my first source of ignition that I carry in the pouch, I used to carry lifeboat matches. And I think you can still get them, but I replaced them with these. And these are the little Yuko storm matches. It's in a waterproof container, there's 15 of them. And you get a little striker on the side. That's always made me wonder why I put a striker on the outside. But there's also two spare ones inside. These are good, windproof, Waterproof, excellent matches. My next source of ignition, disposable gas lighter. Easy to use, reliable. A lot of people say, ah, oh, but they're not waterproof. Well, actually, they don't take very long to dry out. Mine have quite often taken <coughs> a day out in the rain, uh, got wet, and all I do is pop them in my pocket and after an hour or so, they dry back out again. They're better than the ones with the little piezo igniter, like the turbo flame ones, because when they get wet, they're buggered. This will continue to work. They're lightweight, they're cheap. I've marked up with some brightly colored tape. I've put a lanyard on there so I can hang it around my neck. 
I don't like putting anything on the floor, particularly something important like this. But what I've also done with this one, some of you are really eagle-eyed would have spotted it, is I've taped two together. And on one of them, I've taped off the working part. That way I can't use that one. My reasoning behind that is if this one does run out, I've always got a brand new, fresh lighter. So last up on my sources of ignition, the little ferro rod. And this is a little like my fire scout model, one of the old ones. Good, dependable fire starter. Doesn't matter if it gets wet. It's never going to run out of gas and there's no working parts that go wrong. So this definitely deserves a place in my firelight kit. So the next items are my fuels that I can use for getting my fire going. Tinders, I guess that very fine grade of fuel, fuel that's going to initially start your fire. So I've got three tampons. Let's see, these can be split open, fluffed up, and it gives me quite a large amount of cotton wool. So I can get multiple fires going if I need it. I've also got my good old friend, the Gorilla Tape. There's about 12 inches or so of Gorilla Tape on there. A multitude of uses and ideal for getting fires going because it burns furiously. So if I've got wet uh, twigs going over the top, loads of this shredded up, ignited with a little bit of cotton wool, and that will give me a quite a good long burning heat, which will start to dry those twigs out over the top. I've also got, which can also be mixed with my cotton wool, a little tin of petroleum jelly, a little bit of Vaseline. Obviously again, multi-purpose item because I can use this in the cold weather for smearing on my lips uh, or for treating cracked hands. It has a load of different uses. But fire lighting, this and a little bit of cotton wool, you've got an excellent way to dry out bigger wet fuel sat over the top. The last items is four hexamine blocks in a wrapper. Hexamine is a, a solid fuel that burns furiously. It does smell a bit while it burns, so you need to use it in well ventilated areas, but it's reliable and dependable. It can be lit with a flame, so using your lighter. It can be lit with a spark. If you scrape some dust up on the top of the block with your, with your knife blade, and then drop a spark onto it, it does light. These will burn very, very well. And if all else fails, I know I've always got these that I can fall back on. One is usually enough, but I carry four just in case. So my last two items that live in my pouch are a little styrene candle. Burns very bright, very, very hot. And it saves me using the gas in my lighter or my matches. I can light this up using my lighter and I can have that alight for quite some time. Again, ideal when you're igniting big twin bundles and you need that sustained heat underneath to get it going. Obviously, I can also use this for, for lighting in my shelter or as a fire lighter in its own right. This tucked in under a pile of twigs, lit up works very very well and my last item in there is one of these a little set of pocket fire bellows very very good if you've got a coax an ember into flame you can direct the oxygen into even some quite awkward places in your fire to try to get that fire going by adding extra oxygen it's quite a useful little item So there you go, that is the contents of my emergency fire lighting kit. It's there just in case the other items fail and I'd recommend anyone to put one together. Mine lives, as I said, in the top of my rucksack or else around my neck inside my clothing in the winter. 
You may not agree with all of my choices, but it may give you a, perhaps a few ideas of stuff that you could include in your kit for next time you are out in the woods. And as I said, I think in the last video, now is the time when we can't get out in the woods that we need to prepare all these items ready for that day. That way it's time well spent. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember, give it that thumbs up, like the video, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Remembering to hit those notifications so that you know when I've got more stuff coming up. And there is lots more stuff coming up. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Facebook. You know where to find them. If you go into the links box down below, there's some links in there. Follow those through uh, and you, you'll find me over on that social media over there you can also pop over there have a look at my etsy shop over there you can pick yourself up one of my green craft patches i think there's a couple of the leather ones left there's a good resupply of these in as well at the moment and there's a few other items on there for you to be having a look at too i think that's everything i've been neil and until next time stay safe